Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a factorial equation. We've done factorial equations before. You can go out and check the playlist of factorials. And factor basically, we're looking for integer solutions and factorial is defined as follows. For example, three factorial would be three times two times one. Four factorial, let me not write four factorial for obvious reasons. Two factorial would be two times one. One factorial would be just one, okay? And zero factorial is a special value. It is just defined as one. In general, n factorial can be written as n times n minus one, one factorial. So basically the product of all numbers one through n uh, is given as n factorial. And you can basically use this formula to reduce or, re um, you know, to reduce factorials or simplify. So we have this interesting equation, 24 times n factorial equals k factorial, where k and n are positive or non-negative integers. So we're not looking for crazy stuff like, you know, uh, fractions and stuff, even though uh, the graph that I'm going to show you at the end will include all real values for n and k which I replace with x and y. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. First of all, I want you to notice, and you probably already noticed that, and there's a good reason why I didn't use 4 factorial, because 4 factorial is equal to 24. And we have a 24. Does that make sense? That should give you a big clue on this one. So here's what we're going to do. We have 24 times n factorial equals k factorial. Since n factorial and k factorial are integers and 24 is also an integer. I'm going to divide both sides by n factorial. And I want you to notice one thing. n is less than k, right? Or should I say n is less than or equal to k? Well, can they be equal? They can't. So that's why I can safely say that n is less than k. So k is greater. Great. So that's going to be important. And here's what we're going to do. Since k factorial over n factorial is 24, then k factorial over 10 factorial is an integer. Great. But what kind of integer is that? Well, k is greater, so we have a bunch of numbers, k through 1, the product, and then we have the n through 1, and n through 1 cancelled out from k, we end up with k minus n numbers in the product. So it's kind of like the product of product of k minus n consecutive integers. Now, what is that supposed to mean? For example, 6, 5, 4 is the product of three consecutive integers. The largest one is 6. In this case, we kind of have something like k and then k minus 1, maybe if it exists, dot, 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 this is just a product. But we only have k minus n numbers in this product. Make sense? And this is equal to 24. So we're going to try to write 24 as a product of consecutive integers. And then we're going to count the number. That number of numbers in the product is going to give us k minus n because that is the number. Uh, the reason why uh, that's k minus n is because we have a product of k numbers. We're taking away n numbers, so we end up with k minus n numbers in the product. Make sense? Okay. So we're going to be looking for uh, writing 24 as a product of k minus n consecutive integers. Well, first of all, 24 by itself is the product of n, k minus n consecutive integers, because it's just one integer, but it is, you know, um, the product of one consecutive integers, in other words. So 24 can uh, work. And in this case, obviously, 24 being the largest number would be k. But since we only use one number, k minus n would be 1. What is that supposed to mean? We only have one number in the product, and the largest number is 24, so n will be 23 in this case. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. 24 times n factorial is k factorial. If n is 23, then you get 24 times 23 factorial. And for the reasons we mentioned before, this is the same as 24 factorial. So n equals 23 and k equals 24 is a solution to this equation. Make sense? If I want to write it as an n comma k ordered pair, I could just write 23 comma 24. Okay? Uh, great. So let's go ahead and uh, find the other solutions. And then at the end, maybe we can just go ahead and summarize all the solutions. 
Now, we said that uh, 24 must be written as a product of uh, consecutive integers. We could also do the following with 24. We could do 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Oh, great. 24, obviously, since it's 4 factorial, then it can be written as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we use 4 numbers, and largest one is 4. So that is our k, and k minus n is equal to 4. So that means k is 4, n is 0. In other words, we got another order pair, 0, 4. So is that the only way to do it? We have another case. Notice that since 24 is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, it means you can also write it as 4 times 3 times 2. You don't have to include the 1. You can for uh, completeness, but in this case, we, this gives us another solution because the largest number is k, I mean uh, uh, 4 again. k is 4, but k minus n is 3 this time because I used 3 numbers. So when k is 4, n is going to be 1. So that gives me 1, 4. Let's kind of explore what this means from our original equations perspective. Well, if n is equal to 0, then you get 24 times 0 factorial, which is 1. And that is equal to k factorial gives you k equals 4 because 4 factorial is 24. But 24 times 1 factorial also gives you 24 because 1 factorial is 1 and k equals 4 again. For different n values, we get the same k values. And to summarize everything we have so far, let's go ahead and write down all the solutions together. So for completeness sake, we got 0, 4. And by the way, these are n, k ordered pairs like this. 0, 4, 1, 4, and 23, 24. And there are three solutions to this equation. Let me go ahead and show you the graph. Just The graph doesn't mean much, but it's just a fun graph to look at y factorial equals 24. x factorial is a really weird shape. Obviously, Desmos cannot resolve this uh, because there are many issues. But you will notice that if you look at, by the way, this is going to be our n value and this is going to be our k value. If you look at the n values here on the x-axis, you'll notice that uh, for 0 and 1, you get, by the way, this is 1, not this is a 2 because of the scale. Uh, you'll see that we get the same y values or k values. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to say something. Uh, the first method for our integer solutions uh, assumes that k and n are non-negative integers. So we were able to simplify it that way. If you're looking for real solutions, obviously there are quite a few solutions, right? If you look at this graph uh, where n, um, I mean the k value is 4, well, you're going to get other solutions, but finding them would probably be super complicated. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.